Hi guys, Renny here and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm unboxing my chains for my own bikes and since it's been a long time since my last chain unboxing video and I get tons of questions regarding this process, I decided to do a quick video where I talk you through it and also address a couple of questions that I often get and they are, seem to be quite recurring. So the first thing you need to know, if you want to wax your chain, you need to strip all your oil-based lubricants off it first, be it factory grease or just some other loop that you are using uh, currently. There are many methods for this. Uh, you can do it at home. You can use degreases, brake cleaners, ultrasonics, uh, a normal parts cleaning bin, whatever it takes just to remove your lubricant. There are many ways to it. Uh, one thing you need to know that if you're using a chain or you want to clean a chain that has been previously used uh, with normal oil, uh, it will be almost impossible to clean off completely when in the bike and very, very demanding uh, to do it off the bike and you'll likely need an ultrasonic cleaner for that. If you have your chain cleaned, uh, all you need to do is to get a rice cooker or a slow cooker like this one where you can heat it up. The important thing is that it's not too hot. It doesn't uh, reach 100 degrees Celsius or more. So it doesn't actually burn your wax because it's a uh, paraffin is a flammable material. So you don't want to do that. Definitely. Uh, you need to put the wax in there. It's uh, in form of a granulate. If you heat it up, it melts, it turns into a liquid. When it's liquid, you can put your chain in like so, and you need to keep it in there uh, for some amount of time. Now, people like to think that this is uh, some super crazy exact science, very complicated and uh, very precisely tracked in order to make it work. The reality, is that it's not hard at all and you don't need to be super careful with it. You have your clean chain. Uh, I use old spokes uh, to wrap them around. If you put your chain in and you pull it out immediately, uh, the chain is still cold. So it means that the wax will not penetrate it. It will just form kind of a skin on the surface. So having this in mind, if you put the chain in, you need to have it rested in there for a couple of minutes. Again, no exact specific time. It just needs enough so the chain actually reaches the temperature of the wax. So it's nice and homogeneous uh, around it. Then after a couple of minutes, you take it with your swisher tool, you mix around. A little bit you need to do this because the wax has multiple ingredients if you're talking about molten speed wax which is the only one you should use uh, and if you don't mix them then they separate because of the heat it basically creates for kind of a distillation process and you want all of them on your chain uh, waxing also cleans your chain so if you're uh, waxing previously ridden chains uh, then uh, really you can just put them straight in the wax. If you didn't ride in extremely wet, uh, dirty, dusty, muddy conditions, it's really, there's not much point in cleaning it each time. Uh, if you're talking about training chains for regular use, obviously that will differ. If you want to create a low friction chain for time trialing or racing in any discipline, in that case, of course, uh, the cleaner, the better. And it's also advisable to use a separate container with separate wax. And then, of course, there's the powdering process, which you can uh, boost uh, the efficiency with. So, but yeah, if you're talking about just regular training chains like I have here now, it's really uh, not a problem if you just put them straight in. I do this all the time. After a while, the wax will also 
uh, get a bit dirtier then you can just filter it or replace it or both um, so yeah pretty pretty simple if we are talking time and complexity boxing chain uh, is much less time consuming than uh, cleaning a filthy drive train if you're using it with oil which will be happening all the time also it increases your longevity vastly of all the drive train components and reduces your friction which is uh, well basically the thing that is most uh, demanded feature of, of waxing you can also wax your cassette but I don't think it will achieve anything from a friction point of view then I get some questions about this wax build up should you clean this well after a while yes of course it doesn't do any harm obviously but yeah for purely aesthetic and cleanliness reasons uh, it's worth uh, taking off time to time and yeah that's that's basically it then a couple of questions about longevity and reliability noise etc so many people notice that a box chain wax chain is louder than an oil chain yeah because wax is a solid rubricant it doesn't have the damping properties which cause firstly the loss of energy but also the damping of the sound so it's going to be louder inevitably how loud to me it's not bothering at all but some people find that uh, a bit annoying but yeah it's just a minor drawback uh, then uh, using it in wet or off-road conditions it's all completely fine you just need to keep in mind that it doesn't give you much protection against corrosion so you need to dry the chain afterwards if you ride in the wet or the mud and then finally longevity uh, this is basically uh, highly dependent on the conditions you ride in the best is to Revax your chain every 300 kilometers, which sounds very often. Uh, it might depend of obviously on how much you're riding, but the best practice is, uh, is what I do, that I have three chains for every bike and then it's done. I just swap them over and basically I don't need to wax my chains only every, every once in a week or once in two weeks and the rest of the time. I don't need to worry about lubing at all and the drive chain will always be perfect. Okay, so I hope this clears up the confusion. It's a very simple process, very quick if you're using master links uh, to remove a chain, etc. And it's something you can easily do at home. You just need, well, the jar itself and somewhere to hang your chains and a couple of old spokes. To thread them onto okay so i hope uh, this answers some of your questions if you still like to know more then don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below it's all for the day thanks for watching and see you next time